we'll start uh, with our first uh, opening lecture of uh, the day uh, with uh, Omar Grossman, Chief Information Officer at CyberArk. Um, Omar just completed his uh, military service in the Israeli Defense Force for more than 25 years. Uh, currently, he leads the CyberArk Global Information Technology Group. Uh, at the IDF, he served as uh, the, uh, uh, at the Cyber Defense Operation Center. In this role, he led joint and national cyber defense campaign and operations. Omar also serves as the head of the Center for Computing and Information System, MAMRAM in Hebrew, uh, the general cloud service provider of the IDF, providing data and infrastructure services to all military branches, including the general staff. Omar holds a bachelor degree in physics and electronic, electrical engineering from Tel Aviv University and a master of science in government information leadership from the National Defense University College of Information and Cyberspace in Washington, D.C. So it's my great, great pleasure to welcome you. Um, please come. Thank you all. Uh, as Shlomit introduced me, I'm Omar Grossman. I'm uh, honored to be here to open this incredible event uh, focused on the ransomware kill chain. Over the next several hours, you'll hear from some of the most experienced and most talented industry professionals who have dedicated their careers to developing and nurturing essential frameworks, best practices, and partnerships that are focused on targeting the run threats. To kick this session off, I'll tell you a little bit about myself, a little bit of background about me, uh, and my connection to this topic and this community dear and near to my heart. I recently joined CyberArk, as Shlomit mentioned, after 25 years with the Israeli Defense Forces. Up until last year, I was still in my uniform. My most leadership position, as Shlomit mentioned, were the head of the biggest cloud service provider unit in the military. And as the head of operation in the Cyber Defense Division, I was essentially the IDF CISO. With my military experience, I have a good perspective on what it takes to be a world class defender against increasingly targeted and dangerous cyber threats. And as I contemplated my career outside the military, I was drawn to CyberArk, not only for the company's reputation in the cybersecurity market, but I truly believe that identity security is the future. I think identity is the new attack surface. CyberArk's commitment to identity security innovation and helping customers defense against cyber cyber attackers innovations is a major reason why I joined the company eventually. Aligned with these topics and the topic that will, discussed, will be discussed today, as I see it, we have three main missions in cybersecurity, and if we resolve all three of them, we might have a real chance to fix cyberspace. The first one is filling the holes in the laws and norms regarding cyberspace, cybercrime, and especially cyber warfare. The second one is to be able to find technical solutions to make vulnerability patching and the burden of vulnerability patching a thing of the past. We must eradicate one day. And in the world where trust is the most important thing, our third mission is being able to implement identity security principle based on the zero trust approach. Now, I'd like to share with you a short story that parallels today's threat environment. Once upon a time, like any good story should start, in an era when pirates ruled the sea, a notorious band of raiders struck fear into the hearts of sailors and merchants alike. The pirates' modus operandi was simple yet effective. They would ambush unsuspected vessels, overpower the crews, loot everything of value, and often capture hostages and hold them for ransom. In the face of these threats, a coalition was formed to restore the order to the seas. The coalition launched coordinated operations, patrolling trade routes, and establishing fortified harbors. They improved ship designs, enhancing speed and firepower to outmaneuver and overpower the pirate vessels. Skilled sailors were recruited, trained, and armed with the latest weaponry. 
ready to defend against any pirate incursion. The pirates, however, were not ones to surrender easily. They evolved their tactics and grew more menacing. The ransom demands became increasingly outrageous. The relentless pursuit of wealth by the pirates mirrored a more contemporary phenomenon that would emerge centuries later. Of course, I'm talking about the ransomware cyber attacks. In the modern age, instead of ships and swords, hackers arm themselves with advanced technology and intricate knowledge of computer systems. They infiltrate networks, encrypt vital data, and hold it hostage until the victim pay exorbitant amount of ransomware uh, in cryptocurrency. Just as the pirates sought to profit from the vulnerabilities of the maritime world, these cyber criminals capitalized on the weaknesses of the digital infrastructure. The parallels are uncanny. The pirates' ransomware demanded tangible wealth, whereas the ransomware attacker seeks virtual riches. In the military, we used to say, train hard and the fight will be easy. Trust me, it might be the only sentence in Hebrew that sounds better in Hebrew than in English. That philosophy applies to how organization can mitigate impacts of attacks like those stemming from ransomware. A major story the past several weeks focuses on the efforts of the Klopp ransomware gang that is claiming responsibility for exploiting one of several vulnerabilities in the Movit file transfer software, causing significant software supply chain risks that could impact hundreds of organizations, if not more. Many organizations have come forward as victims of extortion and AMP by CLOP, but we haven't yet seen any reports of ransom demands. It's possible we are just waiting for the other shoe to drop. Regardless of if and when that happens in this case, what is clear is that ransomware is the most prominent threat today. Last year, ransomware attacks led to losses of billions of dollars. Its effects can be wide-ranging, from inconvenience, inconveniences like transfers being blocked like, to life-threatening incidents affecting major healthcare providers. According to recent research by CyberArk, nearly 9 in 10, I'm kind of, I repeat, 9 in 10 of the global organizations surveyed experienced ransomware attack in the past year. It's an increase from 7 in 10 from a pre uh, year before. And 60% of affecting paying attackers twice or more times to allow recovery. That signals that they were probably uh, victims of double extortion campaigns. Now, I'm excited to hear from our law enforcement and cybercrime panelists today about advancements in defensive techniques in the ransomware area. Today, governments, Law enforcement agencies, cybersecurity experts, and tech companies must join forces, as the coalition did hundreds of years ago, to protect individuals and organizations from this ever present threat, technology advancements to develop robust countermeasure to deter and apprehend cyber criminals. Over time, hundreds of years ago, the coalition's efforts were successful. The pirate threat was gradually contained and trade routes once again became safer. And just as the maritime world banded together to quell the pirate threat, today's digital realm requires a united front to safeguard our interconnected world from the perils of ransomware attacks. Thank you.